Good evening. Good evening. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Wonderful Savior. Good evening, LaShonda and Webster. God bless you. Thank you for joining. Appreciate your support tonight in our class. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, the Bible says where there's two or three gathered in his name, he would be in the midst of us. So we're going to go ahead and get started with our lesson tonight. It's a very wonderful and powerful lesson that's uh, really going to give insight and understanding to all of us concerning having a confused mind, a confused mind. So we're just going to get started, open up in prayer tonight. I pray that you had a wonderful and a glorious day. I had a peaceful, relaxful day myself and just enjoyed the presence of the Lord today because when you get into his presence, he gives you such a peace that surpasses all understanding no matter what's going on around you. The rain came down pretty heavy earlier today. It was beautiful scenery just to see the rain coming down so so powerful which remind me of God's anointing how his presence overshadows us the same way when we allow his anointing to flow through our lives God begin to rain down his power upon us that we can do exploits supernatural things for the kingdom of God the Bible tells us that signs and wonders will follow us as believers, that in his name we can cast out devils, speak with new tongues, we can heal the sick, lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. It's so many different things that God has entitled us to do as a believer when we trust in his word and we trust in his ability that's working in our lives because he equipped us. With everything we need for spiritual warfare, it's up to us to get into the Word of God to understand what battle we're in and how to overcome the adversary that rises against us every day of our lives. And most of the times, the enemy attacks us is in our mindsets. It may be through other people sometimes. It may be places you go. A spiritual warfare can engage you no matter where you are, and it's up to you to put on the full arm of God daily that you can stand against the wiles of the devil. So, Lord God, we come tonight telling you thank you. We thank you for your grace and peace. We thank you for your love and mercy. We thank you for your kindness, oh God, that's better than life itself, God. Your word tells us, Father, your faithfulness reaches to the clouds, Father God. And, and Father God, your mercy, Father God, endures forever god we, we know that without you we can do nothing but god you are a god who answers prayer a god who delivers a god who sanctifies a god who who changes things in our lives that we'd be more willing and submitted to your will your call and your purpose on our lives tonight lord god speak to us by divine revelation allow the mysteries of the gospel to come unfolded unto us oh god as we study the book even more, the battlefield of the mind, and deal with the subject on confusion tonight, oh God, we pray that you give us clarity, give us understanding, give us insight, that we would know, Father God, if we're walking in the spirit of confusion, or if the enemy, Father God, trying to bring us to an entrapment of confusion, that we'll be aware of his devices and his tactics, oh God, and that we would guard ourselves daily as we walk by faith, and not by sight. And we thank you that we shall overcome because greater is he that's in us than he that is in the world. And we thank you. And Father, we bind every spectating spirit, every confusing spirit that will try to rise against us even during this lesson tonight, oh God, that we, Father God, will have free access 
Let the word go forth with power and authority, O God, bringing every demonic force, our Father, under subjection to your Lordship and your authority. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I have really been enjoying myself teaching these lessons the last uh, several months. It's just been very inspirational and encouraging to myself. God bless you, uh, Mama Denise. It's good to see you on tonight. It's truly been a blessing teaching these lessons because I read this book before, but as I've been taking my time going from chapter to chapter, God has been giving me more revelation and more insight concerning the book, The Battlefield of the Mind, and how we are to be aware of our adversary that every day is planning and plotting and conniving and doing everything in his power to strip you of your power, to strip you of your anointing, to bring you to a place of vulnerability where he can entrap you in a, as a spiritual slave. But God has really been opening up my eyes and all of our hearts who receive this word. He's opened up our eyes that we can know and see and understand where we are and where we should be in the Lord and how we need to stand up against demonic forces that will come against us every day of our lives because we are in a spiritual warfare. If you haven't realized that by now, we are in a spiritual warfare and the enemy is not holding back anything. He's coming with all full ammunition to attack you through any avenue or any entity that he can to defeat you. But tonight we serve the devil. Notice that we will not be defeated. We will not be, be held into captivity, but we shall stand against the wiles of the devil as we learn and walk by faith to submit ourselves to the lordship and the authority and the rulership of our savior and let him fight our battle. Because one thing I read today, that God will fight our battle for us. It's up to us to allow him to fight that battle. We can get into a place where we try to fight principalities and powers and rules of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places with the mindset of the flesh. And I want to tell you, you're going to always find yourself defeated. But when you get into the spirit and allow the mind of the spirit to govern, guide, rule, and control, and dominate your actions and your, your attitude and your character. Everything about you will line up with the word of God and give you full authority. Full authority. God didn't say some authority. He said full authority. He gave us authority over all the powers of the enemy. And so when we get to the place, we recognize that we are in control by submitting to the Lordship of our Savior, Jesus Christ, we can overcome anything the enemy brings our way and become out victoriously. Because greater is he that's in you, that's in me, than he that's in the world. Amen. Amen. Our key scripture tonight is coming out of uh, St. James chapter 1. St. James chapter 1, verse 5 through 8. And it says... Chapter 10 in the book, if you follow me along in the book, The Battle for the Mind, I'm on the Kindle version, and it's page 85. The Kindle version, page 85, if you're following in the Kindle. I don't know what page it is in the book because I don't have the actual book, physical book. I have the Kindle version of the book. And chapter 10 is dealing with a confused mind. And it reads as following. In James chapter 1, Beginning at verse 5, it says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, not, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. In the Amplified Version, it says it like this. If any of you lack wisdom to guide him through a decision or circumstance, he is he is to ask of our benevolence God, who gives to any everyone generously and without rebuke or blame, 
and it will be given to him. But he must ask for wisdom in faith without doubting God's willingness to help. For the one who doubts is like a billowing surge of the sea that is blown about and tossed by the wind. For such a person ought not to think or expect that he will receive anything at all from the Lord, being a double-minded man, unstable and restless in all his ways, in everything he thinks, feels, or decides. Confusion is a word that's defined lack of understanding, uncertainty. Lack of understanding, uncertainty. And there are so many Christians, believers in the body of Christ who goes about daily with a double-minded attitude because they're having came to the place of learning how to, to yield and submit to the Holy Spirit when he's speaking to us and giving us guidance and direction. So we find ourselves wavering. And it's talked about a billow. If you ever been out to the ocean and you see that that little uh, uh, balancing thing out there, it's called a billow. It's out there because it lets you know how far you need to go in the water before you uh, start getting into the dangerous parts of the water where it becomes deeper. So you got to be aware that God warns us that if any man lacks wisdom, wisdom is instruction. Wisdom is what, what God gives us to give us direction. To lead us in the pathway of truth and righteousness. God bless you, Evangelist Brenda. God it wants us to know tonight that we got to get into the Word of God. And you got to study the Word of, and know the Word of God. Many people read the Bible as a good book. Many people have the Bible sitting on their table or mantle. Never pick it up. It collects dust. What good is the Word of God going to benefit you when God says everything you need the benevolent God. We, we in the churches, a lot of churches take up benevolence offer, and that offering is dedicated for when people have a need in that church, who's been committed to that church, been givers in that church, who's been faithful to that church, and they have a dire need to meet a, 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 a certain situation that they're faced with. That offering is set aside for that purpose. God says, "I'm a benevolent God." I will give you everything that you need when you trust in me at my word. And because God is generous, he said, you need wisdom, ask God. You need understanding, ask God. You need direction, ask God. You need, need to know what to do, ask God. So anything that we need, but then it tells us that if a person is stagnant or unwavering, don't, don't, I mean, wavering, not unwavering, but wavering in their belief system, they will find themselves double-minded. And that double-minded is in the attitude of when the Holy Spirit is leading you to make a decision that's going to benefit you in your spiritual growth. He tells you, that's like, for example, you go to church and the Lord says, I want you to give a hundred dollars. And you hear it, you hear it in the spirit. And your flesh says, no, nah, I need $100. That's, that's the only $100 I got right now, so I'm going to hold on to that. But then the Spirit says, give that $100. And you keep keep vasculating back and forth to where you never make a sound decision, so you're uncertain in your decision. Should I do it or should I not do it? That's the same way with sin. When the Holy Spirit says, don't go over that man or the woman's house, because if you do, you're going to be enticed to give it to the to fornication or adultery of the flesh or alcoholism or whatever whatever they do that's not of God to entice you to do the same thing they're doing, the Holy Spirit says, no, don't go over there. You go over there, you're going to find yourself in trouble. So we, we become uncertain because I know what God is telling me, but my flesh is speaking louder. So instead of obeying the Spirit of God, I obey the flesh. And the flesh gets me in more trouble. So many times when the Holy Spirit is directing us to do something that's going to benefit us, we need to learn how to shut our mouth, shut down your mind. We got to learn how to shut down our minds. And what I mean by that, shut down the reasonings of your flesh. The reasonings of your flesh is what's going to cause you 
to always miss the mark <clears throat> when the Holy Spirit is guiding and directing and leading you to do something for the kingdom. So in our book, it's, it reads like this. If any of you is deficient in wisdom, deficient, lacking, let him ask the giving God who gives to everyone liberally and ungrudgingly without reproaching or fault finding and it will be given him. God promises. I, I love the way this is written because if we're deficient in anything that God promised us, he said, all we got to do is ask. When you ask in faith, God promises, hey, you know what? I got you. You know, I'm going to gonna supply, provide just what you need at the time you need it because I'm a self-existing God. Everything you need is in me. I know what you need, and I'm going to do it. And all you got to do is learn how to shut your mouth. Say, okay, Lord, I hear you. In St. John chapter 14, verse 14, it says, If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. James says, if you lack anything, any wisdom, ask God. God will do it. Then it says, only it must be in faith that he asks with no wavering, no hesitating, no doubting. For the one who wavers, hesitates, doubts is like the billowing surge out at sea is blown hither and thither and tossed by the wind. For truly, let not such a person imagine that he will receive anything he asks for from the Lord. For being as he is, a man of two minds, check this out, a man of two minds, hesitating, biased, irresolute. He is unstable and unreliable and uncertain about everything he thinks, feels, and decides. That's what happens to us when we get entrapped by the enemy. We find ourselves unstable, unreliable, uncertain. You go to work and they give you an assignment to do and you're not sure how to do that assignment. Instead of asking somebody to help you, you try to figure it out your own way, make things worse because you don't know what you're doing. You're unreliable. Then if they, they tell you you have to be, be at a certain point, a meeting at a certain time, and you say, oh, well, I, I'll get there when I get there. That's unreliable because you're not being dependable to the person who's, who's trusting you to do something for them. God does the same thing with us. He trusts us to fulfill the call on our lives, to walk in ministry, to do what he wants us to do by faith. We have discovered that wandering and confusion are relatives. Last week, we talked about wandering, a wandering mind. And what I meant, wandering is two words. One word, W-A-N-D-E-R-I-N-G, and the other one, W-O-N-D-E-R-I-N-G. So two different cases of wandering. And we discussed that last week, how a person can be wandering in their minds, the W-A-N-D-E-R-I-N-G, and lead themselves into confusion, lead themselves in a pathway that leads to destruction, contrary to God's word, not following his will, not doing what God wants you to do. So then you find your body acting out, wandering away from the faith. And what I mean by wandering, instead of going to church when you need to be there, to be in the Bible studies, be in prayer meetings, be consecrated, be seeking God's face, you wander into the attributes and the nature of the flesh to appease your flesh. And in the process, you miss the mark. You miss what God wanted you to do. James chapter 1, verse 5 are excellent scriptures. They help us understand how to overcome wandering, doubt, and confusion and to receive what we need from God. To me, the man of two minds in King James Version calls him a double-minded man. It's a picture of confusion as he constantly goes back and forth, back and forth, never deciding on anything. So many people in the house of God do just that. 
They go back and forth, back and forth. God told me to be at this church, then God told me to leave this church. God told me to be at this church, God told me to leave this church. So you don't know what you are supposed to do because now you're tossed in confusion. Many people go to certain churches, they get comfortable, then they leave when things are going the way they want to go. They get mad, get mad at the leadership, get mad at the pastor. Don't like the way they preach, don't like the way they sing. So we have finding find many excuses on reason to leave church. So when you leave the church and the Holy Spirit says, you need to be there. There's something that you have to contribute to this ministry. And you know God has placed something in all of us, a gift and a talent in each person that's what he used for his glory. But instead of being obedient, we get into confusion. We leave, then we come back. We leave, then we come back. That person, as it says, is uncertain. <coughs> uncertain about everything. Then uh, Arthur says, I was I lived much of my life like that, not realizing that the devil declared war against me and that my mind was the battlefield. I was totally confused about everything and didn't understand why. Reasoning leads to confusion. Reasoning leads to confusion. Oh, you little faith, why reason ye among yourselves? Matthew 16, verse 8. Let's go to Matthew 16, verse 8. Some great scriptures, too. So, Matthew 16, verse 8. And this deals with when Jesus was in the process of teaching. And it's, I'm going to start at verse 1. It says, The Sadducees, Sadducees <clears throat> came in tempting, desire, tempting desire that him, him that he would show them a sign from heaven. He answered, said, When is it evening? Ye say, It will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. O ye hypocrites! Ye can discern the face of the sky, but ye cannot discern the signs of time. A wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after sign, and there shall no sign be given unto him, unto it, but the sign of the prophet Jonah. Uh, we talking about Jonah. He is left and departed. And when he, when and when his disciples were come to the other side, they had forgotten to take bread. And Jesus said to them, Take heed, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, It is because we have taken no bread. When Jesus perceived, he said unto them, O ye of little faith, why reason among yourselves because ye have no bread? Do ye not understand and neither remember the five loaves and the five thousand and how many baskets ye took up? Neither the seven loaves. Of the 4,000, how many baskets you took up? How is it that you do not understand that I spake it not to you concerning bread, that you should be aware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees? And what Jesus was talking about in reference to how he did the many miracles of feeding in different occasions, but then also they, the Pharisees and the Sadducees would think he's talking about they didn't have no bread, but he wasn't talking about the leaven of bread. He's talking about the leaven of sin. Sin is a leavening. It, it'll break you down. It'll mess you up. It'll keep you away from God's will. And so what he was talking about here, he said, you asked for a sign, but the only sign that was given was when Jonah came proclaiming the gospel. But yet you didn't want to receive Jonah. So, so we got to get to the place where we know the word of God for ourselves and understand what God is talking about. He said, you wicked and adulterous generation seekers after a sign. And many people are the same way today they're looking for signs of a believer. They're looking for you to do something extraordinary, out the ordinary, something that's going to capture their attention to get them to get to know God. But the only sign they need to see is you living your life faithful to the cause of Christ and that the word of God is coming out of your mouth to demonstrate through your life that, hey, I'm living by the word, not only that, but I'm the walking word to tell you about salvation, how Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. Thus far, we have talked about wandering and we talked about doubt. We'll talk about doubt in the next chapter. Right now, I would like to elaborate a little more on confusion. 
A large percentage of God's people are admittedly confused. Why? As we have seen, one reason is wandering. Another reason, another is, you know, is reasonings. The dictionary partially finds a word reasoning in the noun form as underlining fact or motives that provide logical sense for a premise or occurrence, and in the verb form as to use the faculties of reasoning and think logically. And a lot of people do that. They reason in their minds when it comes to making decisions. Instead of praying about everything, we worry about everything. Instead of seeking God's face for the right direction and what I need to do concerning something that's going on in my life, the underlying factor allow my reasonings to take control. And I used to love Star Trek. I used to love Star Trek. And I love Dr. Spark because when something didn't make sense to him, he said, uh, uh, Captain Kurt, that's not logical. In other words, it's, it's not fitting in the reasonings. You know, because sometimes we try to make sense out of things that doesn't make sense. And we have to really be careful how we entertain the reasonings of our mindset instead of the mind of the spirit, because the mind of the flesh will cause you to become hostile towards God and become an enemy of God. A simple way to say it is reasoning occurs when a person is trying to figure out why behind something. We always do that. Why did this happen, God? How come my mother died? How come my father died? Lord, how come I had an accident? How come somebody broke in my house? How come somebody broke in my car? God, why? We ask questions why so many times because we don't understand what's going on, which is nothing wrong but asking a question why, but when it, you get stuck in the mode of asking why. You get stuck to where you're not listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit trying to teach you something on how to be aware of be discerning of other people or your surroundings so instead, we ask questions why and never submit to the voice of the Lord. Reasoning calls the mind to revolve around and around a situation, issues, or a, even events, tempted to understand all this intricate component parts. We are reasoning when we dis dissect a statement or a teaching if it is logical or disregard if it's not. So, if I don't understand a statement, someone tells me, so the man thinks in the heart, so is he, we try to dissect it. We try to get some type of reasoning in this. Why is a person the way they are if they think the way they are according to the Bible? Why did God say that? God knows better than what we can ever understand. And there are some things in life we'll never comprehend. But we have to trust God and his word and take his word to heart and know that it's a solid gospel that God has spoke something to us to help change our thinking, even our attitudes, even our nature, change our identity. But we got to get to the place where it's okay, God, I'm not going to try to dissect this. I'm not going to try to figure this out on my own. Holy Spirit, give me understanding. Holy Spirit, give me wisdom concerning the word I just read or so what someone preached. Give me understanding that I can know what they're talking about. And when you get understanding, the Holy Spirit will give you clarity. Then you know how to apply that word to your own life circumstance or situations. Satan frequently steals the will of God from us due to reasonings. Satan frequently steals the will of God from us due to reasonings. Isn't that something? How the enemy can take the will of God away from you? For example, if you know you've been called to be an evangelist and you started out studying the Bible, going to classes to learn about how to be an evangelist, to be skilled in evangelist, and to know how to fulfill the call on your life as an evangelist. But then a life circumstance turns your mind to begin to focus on whatever happened to you. Then you neglect what God has called you to do because now you're stuck in a rut. You're in a place of misery and despair. So now the enemy is, has taken the will of God for you to fulfill the call of your life because you gave it to him. You gave him the power to do that. 
And we do that all the time when we don't understand why I went through divorce, why my, my uh, family is in confusion, why all this trouble keep coming away. Every time I turn around, I keep having an accident. We don't understand why things happen to us. So our natural mind says, you know what? Let me figure this out. It must be something I've done wrong. It must be something I must have let somebody else do to me. You know, because we want to fix our situations according to our natural mindset. When many times it's a spirit, a spiritual attack that's against you, and you got to recognize when things happen, it's not always the enemy, but it's the spirit of the enemy using somebody else to attack you. And we got to pray against those demonic forces that will come into our, our arena, come into our, our mindsets, get into our surrounding. And we got to pray against those spirits and guard our hearts. What the word says, for out of it flows the issues of life. So we got to get an understanding. And all that getting, get understanding. The Lord may direct us to do certain things, but if it does not make sense, if it is not logical, we may attempt to disregard it. You hear what I just said? The Lord may direct us to do certain things, but if it does not make sense, if it's not logical, we may be attempted to disregard it. What God leads a person to do does not always make logical sense to his mind. His spirit may affirm it and his mind may reject it, especially if it would be out of the ordinary or unpleasant or if, or if it would require a personal sacrifice or discomfort. If it's always nice if the spirit it, it, it is always nice if the spirit and the mind agree, but if they don't, we should always choose to follow the spirit. We should always choose to follow the Holy Spirit. Because some things God will require you to do would not make sense to your natural mind. Just like buying a house. God may tell you, go look at a house and, and go to that house, pray over that house, walk around that house seven times. And it's a vacant house. And you go to that house and it doesn't make sense. And you say, no, nah, I ain't going to do that. That don't make sense me walking around this house because, you know, I, I heard God say do this, but no, nah, it don't make sense. So I walk away. So I disregard what God told me. That may have been the exact house that God has specifically set for you in the season of your life to bless you. But because of the mind of the flesh gets in the way, the mind says, that doesn't make sense. I'm not walking around no property. I'm not going to go knock on nobody's door. I'm not doing none of that. So I miss out the promises and the blessings God has for me because I allow my mind to dictate to me what I should not do. Don't reason in the mind, just obey in the spirit. Don't reason in the mind, just obey in the spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. But the natural man receives not the things of the spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. The natural man will never understand the things of the Holy Spirit. Why? Because they are spiritually discerned. The Holy Spirit reveals to us what we need to know in the proper time and season of our lives. So therefore the flesh thinks it's foolish to listen to the voice of the Spirit because it doesn't make sense. But when God tells you to do a specific thing, we must learn how to identify God's voice from our voice and from the enemy's voice. Because sometimes the enemy's voice speaks louder than God's voice. And sometimes our voice speaks louder than God's voice. So you got to understand what am I speaking over myself? Am I speaking life in a dead situation? Am I speaking healing over sickness? Am I trusting God's word to open doors in my life? Or am I going to speak negatively and allow myself to be double-minded and never get an understanding of how to enter into the promises God has for me? And so many people are violated by the enemy because 
We don't listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. We listen to the voice of the enemy. And the enemy will always tell you to doubt God and his word. Fear, doubt, and unbelief goes together. And that's one thing that the enemy uses the most against a believer is to shut down the mind of the spirit and allow you to walk in the mind of your flesh. And the mind of your flesh will always, will always, is a guarantee, oppose the mind of this Holy Spirit. Here's a practical, personal illustration that I hope will help bring more understanding on this issue of reasoning in the mind versus obedience in the spirit. One morning I was getting dressed to minister in a weekly meeting that I conducted near my hometown. I started thinking about a woman who ran our ministry of health there and how faithful she had been. A desire rose up in my heart to do something to bless her in some way. Father Ruth Ann has been such a blessing in, uh, to us all these years. I prayed, what can I do to bless her? Immediately my eyes fell on a new dress that was hanging in my closet and I knew it was in my heart. The Lord has prompted me to give the dress to Ruth Ann. Although I bought it three months earlier, I had never worn it. As a matter of fact, it was still hanging under the plastic bag I brought it home in. I really liked it, but every time I thought about wearing it, for some reason, I just had no desire to put it on. Remember I said when my eyes fell on the red dress, I knew I should give it to Ruth Ann. However, I, didn't, I really didn't want to give it up. Give it up. So immediately I began to reason in my mind that God could not be telling me to give her the red dress because it was brand new, never worn, and rather experienced, but rather expensive. And I had even purchased the red and silver earrings to match it too. I had kept my carnal mind out of the situation and continued to be sensitive to God in, in my spirit. Every everything would go would have gone nicely, but the human have ability to deceive ourselves through reasonings. But humans, humans, we have the ability to deceive ourselves through reasonings when we really don't want to do what God is saying. I found that to be a very profound statement. Our human reasonings will every time second guess what God tells you to do to bless somebody else. If God puts somebody on your mind and says to call that individual or go by their house, your flesh will tell you, no, nah, they probably don't want no company. They're probably too busy for me. I don't have time. So we neglect the Holy Spirit when uh, sometimes when God tells us to do certain things that's out the ordinary and you do what God says, it blesses the individual tremendously. And I, I remember one, one occasion when I had brought something brand new and the Lord had told me, to give it away. Same thing happened to me. And I, I wanted it so bad, but when I bought it, I tried it on, but then I knew, I was like, no, nah, this ain't going to work. I don't want this. Then the Lord, then I said to myself, no, nah, I'm going to keep it anyway. The Holy Spirit put a certain person on my mind and said, give this to the individual. And guess what happened? I reasoned myself out of it, but then the Holy Spirit kept priming my heart to be obedient to give this item to this individual. And guess what happened? I got double for being obedient to the Spirit of God. I got more than I wanted after that because somebody else blessed me after that. And a lot of times we cut our blessings off because the reason is in our minds is, no, I don't want to do this. This don't seem right. They might not receive it. And the Holy Spirit said, nope, do it anyway. And because of your obedience, the Father who gives without without restraints, will turn around and return, double your blessing. And he will not only double your blessing, sometimes triple your blessing. Why? Because of the God that's unrelentless. Whatever God says he's going to do, he's not going to change his mind about it. He will cause men to give and change your life to bless you because of your obedience. So then he goes on and says, some weeks later, I was getting ready for another meeting at the same location just before when once again Ruth Ann came to my mind, came up in my heart and I began to pray for her. I repeated the whole scene again saying, Father, Ruth Ann has been such a blessing to us and what can I do to bless her? Immediately I saw the red dress again and I got a sinking feeling in my flesh because I remembered the other incident which I had quickly and totally I had quickly forgotten. 
So then it says, this time there was no squirming me out of it. Either I had to face the fact that God was showing me what to do and do it, or simply say, I know what you're showing me, Lord, but I'm not, I'm just not going to do it. I love the Lord too much to willfully, knowingly disobey him over and over again because I talked to him about the red dress. So here's the scenario. The same incident came into her mind again when the Holy Spirit spoke to her. And she prayed for this lady, about blessing this lady, and the Holy Spirit says, now do it. This time, she eventually obeyed the Holy Spirit and blessed the lady with the dress that she had. And in return, God blessed that woman, and the woman was blessed by receiving that, that offering from her, that, that dress. Here's another. It says, my mind, carnal man, D did not understand giving away a new dress I had never worn, but my spiritual man understood it very well. So just because your flesh don't understand what God tells you to do, it's better to obey God than become a sacrifice of disobedience. There was a man named King Saul. When God told him to go kill the Amalekites, he gave him a stern, specific order of what to do, how to do it, and when to do it. And because of his flesh, the reasonings, he disobeyed God and partially obeyed God and did what God partially told him to do, which, which resulted in full-blown disobedience. We do it all the time. We say, well, God did tell me not to do certain things, but I only did a little bit of it. So God, I'm sure God, he, he knows my heart. He loves me unconditionally. And then he said, if I confess my sin, he's faithful to forgive, and, and forgive me my sins and claim all unrighteousness. So in the process, I have a little disobedience which results in full-blown disobedience. Because a little leaven, which is sin, corrupts the whole thing. So you can't do a little sin and expect God to say, hey, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bless you anyway because you did a little sin. I'm, I'm going to forgive you anyway because you did a little sin. No, you got to come full clean with God. Say, God, I messed up. I disobeyed you. Now forgive me. And because of the heart of obedience, God forgives us from our sinful desire and our sinful ways. But be ye doers of the word, obey the message, and not merely listen, listen to it, Betraying yourselves into deception by reasoning contrary to the truth. James chapter 1 verse 22. James chapter 1 verse 22 said, Be ye doers of the word, not hearers only. So you can't just listen to the word and not obey the full message. We have to learn how to obey God's word and follow his word, listen to the word, stand on the word, and trust God in his word. Anytime we see the word says and refuse to do it, anytime we see what the word says and refuse to do it, reasoning somehow gotten involved and deceived us into believing something other than truth. We cannot spend excessive time trying to understand mentally everything the word says. If we bear witness in the spirit, we can move ahead and do it. I found out that God wants me to obey him whether or not I feel like it, want to, or think it's a good idea. God wants us to obey him, whether it feels good or don't feel good. We have to obey God in his word. When God speaks through his word in our inner man, we are not to reason, debate, or ask ourselves what he has said is logical. We must obey the word. When God speaks, we are to mobilize, not rationalize. When God speaks, we are to mobilize, put in action, get moving, not rationalize or reason with it. Lean on, trust in, be confident in the Lord with all your heart, mind, and do not rely on your own insight or understanding. Proverbs 3 and 5. Proverbs 3 and 5. In other words, do not rely on reasonings. Reasoning opens the door for deception. 
Reasoning opened the door for deception, illusions, delusions. It opens the avenue for the enemy to bring you to a place of confusion. You have a lot of people live by delusions in their lives, a fairy tale of life, in their mindsets. A lot of people in the psychiatric wars because they're living according to delusions. Demonic forces infiltrated their mindsets and caused them to lose their mind so they're living in another place in their minds. And many times we go to church and we sit in church and we reason in our minds and we're not paying attention to what the speaker is talking about. We wander from the truth. We go somewhere else in our mind, but yet our body is still there in church. We all have done it at one point or another. But God wants you to know tonight that you need to make a decisive decision to no longer follow the dictates of your flesh, but follow the leadership of the Holy Spirit. And stop listening to the enemy and allow the Holy Spirit to govern, guide, lead, control you in the pathway, the plan, and the will that God has for your life. I, asked one, I once asked the Lord why so many people are confused. And he said to me, tell them to stop trying to figure out everything. And they will stop being confused. I have found it to be absolutely true. Reason and confusion go together. So reason and confusion goes together. You and I can ponder a thing in our hearts. We can hold, hold it before the Lord and see if it desires to give us understanding, but in a minute we'll, far, we'll start feeling confused and we have gone too far. Reason is dangerous for many reasons, but one of them is this. We can reason and figure out something that seems to make sense to us, but we, what we have reason to correct may be still be incorrect. So some things we try to reason with is still end up being incorrect in our understanding because we're not listening to the voice of the spirit. The human mind is like logic and order and reasons. The human mind likes logic, order, and reasons. It likes to deal with what it understands. Therefore, we have a tendency to put things into a neat little being in the compartments of our mind, thinking this must be the way it is because it fits so nicely here. If we can find something, our minds are comfortable with and still be totally wrong. So if I'm thinking wrong and I'm compartmentalizing my wrongdoings, I treasure them in my treasure box in compartments so I have access to it whenever I feel like I need to go into a certain area of my mind. Apostle Paul says in Romans chapter 9 verse 1, Romans chapter 9 verse 1, I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying, my conscience enlightened, and prompted by the Holy Spirit, bear witness to me. Paul knew he was doing the right thing, not because of his reasons. It is said, not, not because of his reasons, it said it was right, but because it bore witness in his spirit. And that's where we need to make our decisions. When reasonings doesn't line up with the voice of the Holy Spirit in your heart, you need to shut it down. Don't give in to it, because when you give in to that type of mindset, the enemy will keep you in a place where you'll never be obedient to the voice of the Holy Spirit. You always follow the dictates and leadership of your flesh. As we have seen, the mind does at times aid the spirit. The mind and the spirit do work together. The mind and the spirit do work together. But the spirit is more noble. Oregon and should always be honored above the mind. The spirit and the mind works together because your soul mind is where the Holy Spirit begins to speak to us with the wisdom and the knowledge from the word of God. And God begins to speak a rhema word to you in your soul mind, which gets into your heart. And it begins to manifest in your life. So you got to get to the place where understand the word of God, walk in it, stand on it, trust God his word. And know that without God, his leadership, his guidance, 
we're headed down the wrong pathway because your mind, my mind, will always influence and entice us to do everything that's contrary to the will of God for our lives. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 says, Present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, which is your reasonable service. The most reasonable, the most logical thing we can do is to present ourselves to God as living sacrifices. In other words, die to that old nature. Die to that mindset. Die to your attitude. Die to the nature of the flesh and allow the spirit to raise you up in the new life that will be conducive to govern and guide and control you to walk by faith in the promises, the plan, the vision, the purpose God created you. And I guarantee you will always find yourself living a fruitful and an abundant life in the presence of the Lord. Amen. It's time to be going by quick. But I pray something is being said tonight that will help encourage you. We're going to continue this on next week. There's more to this chapter that we're going to get into. But um, stay encouraged. Allow the Holy Spirit to lead you back to the Word of God. If you haven't been reading your Bible, haven't been studying the Word of God, haven't been meditating on the Word, read Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, which talks about meditating on the Word of God, putting the Word in your heart. Don't let it depart from your mouth. Because I guarantee when you put the Word inside of you, the Holy Spirit is going to begin to lead you down the pathway into the will of God for your life and everything that you need God to do in your life. As I read in St. John chapter 14, verse 14, he said, if you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. It's a guarantee. It's a promise that God has for us when we shut down the reasonings of our minds. And allow the Holy Spirit to teach us, to instruct us, to guide us in the plan and the purpose God for has for us. I love when God, when Jesus was getting ready to depart, he said, I'm not going to leave you comfortless, but I'm going to leave you a comforter, an aid, a helper, who's going to come and be there to guide you and bring back to your remembrance the things that you have been taught. We need to come back to the foundation of what we've been taught. We need to come back to the Word of God and allow the Holy Spirit to remind us of the importance of who we are in God, the life we need to live, and the promises God has for us. Amen. God bless you. So, Father, tonight we thank you for the Word tonight. I pray, Lord, that you continue to minister to all of our hearts change our thinking, change our attitudes, help us to not lean on our reasonings, our understanding anymore from the day forward, but that we'll be sensitive to hear your voice speaking to us, God, and be obedient to do what you instruct us to do by faith. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want you to pray this prayer. For the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever shall believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And you can receive the new life, the life that we're talking about, the life of the Spirit of God that lives inside of us when you give your heart to Jesus. So I want you to pray this prayer with me, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. I ask you to come into my heart, forgive me for my sins, knowingly and unknowingly, wash me clean by the blood of the Lamb. Come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. And Lord, I thank you for saving me. And I thank you, Lord God, for what you're doing in my life right now. Now fill me with the Holy Spirit and that with power to be a witness for you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. That scripture is Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Romans chapter 12, verse 1, not Romans chapter 9. So you all stay encouraged. Stay excited about Jesus. Know that God loves you. Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, Mary. Any other questions?
Any other questions or comments anyone want to state at this time? And I tell you, you know, when you allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you, he's going to continue to enrich you in the knowledge of the word of God and give you clarity and understanding that you can apply the word of God to your heart. So until next week, you all stay excited about Jesus and know that God loves you and so do I. Have a good night.